Okay, are you ready? Because it's time for the process behind my new animated intro. Right now what you're seeing is just the rough blocking of the initial pose. I had many grand ideas of what this animation could be, but ultimately cracked down to what I could feasibly do with my very small skill level in animation. So the animated intro is going to be popping out of the screen and chuckling. So I focused on what frames I could hold to make that action more apparent as well as adding in between frames so we could get that basic blocking of the pose. And once that was done, it was time to add some details and then come back the next day and finish adding those details so that I could ultimately be ready for doing the line art over that rough sketch animation. The line art definitely tested my patience. So to help keep my sanity, the first line art I did was for the main keyframe of the animation, so that's where I want it held the longest, so that you can see that frame the most apparently. So after doing the line art of that frame, I decided to color it first and then do the line art for the rest of the frames, just to help keep my morale high. And then I fixed a little layer issue where the hair was over the shirt for some reason. And then after that, I finished doing the line art for the animation. And then it came time to color all the animation frames. So I would duplicate the line art, set it to alpha lock, fill the layer with the base color, and then use the selection tool set to color fill to fill the color, base color, add a clipping mask, attach all the other colors, yada yada. More technical jargon. I thought I would just leave it there, but I can't be helped. I had to do some shadows and lighting. I accidentally colored it on the main frame quite frequently, so I'd have to undo stuff and go back to the clipping mask. So I was always very careful I had the original frames backed up in case any Anything went wrong with glitches or mistakes that I could go back and have my old frames preserved. I focused on keeping only two to three colors for the lighting and shadows of every partial aspect of the character because I would shade and light the character in parts so that everything could stay as consistent as it could. So I started with the hair, the bow, and the turtleneck, and then I moved on to the shirt. And then the last stretch was the skin, which definitely felt like it took the most out of me. But at the same time too, I think it was just because it's that final stretch of once I shade all of the skin, then I'll be done with the animation. And that's a big moment for me because this is the first fully colored, shaded, finished animation, 2D animation I've ever done. <laughs> it's kind of, it's, it's a big deal. I mean, there's already things I'm looking at that I know I could have done better, but at the same time, I'm still proud of it and it definitely surpasses my initial animated intro. I did not like that one. <laughs> it actually kind of made me not want to make art videos because I wanted an intro, but I was embarrassed by the one I made. <laughs> and so it definitely helped motivate me to make this one so that I could continue to want to make art videos. But also now I have that, wait, I can, I can actually animate. <laughs> that feeling inside, like, doing it it's a big deal and then to hit play once everything was shaded and see that final fully done animation that ah, that was a big moment for me so after fixing just a couple of shading errors i noticed i duplicated every frame attached a clipping mask to the original frame set it to overlay and then lighten its opacity to a certain amount and that just overall made the whole animation more colorful and bold. I, I felt it helped make a difference. And then once all of that was done, then it was time to move on because I wasn't quite done with the animated intro yet. I had the character done, but I needed to move on to also having attached the Lily Factor title in there. So that meant drawing the Lily Factor title, setting it up in Animation Assistant Procreate, and then having the original frame and duplicating it and erasing it and duplicating and erasing it and on and on and on. Initially, I just erased it willy nilly from right to left, but then I realized I wanted it to look more like it was being written. So I erased it in reverse of how I would write it. So it's kind of like thinking backwards in a way but that was how I managed to animate it as if it were being drawn right in front of you. After doing the animation, I realized it was too slow because I wanted it to be really quick to just come in, you know, be about a second long. So I deleted a lot of in-between frames and it still wasn't quite fast enough yet. So I increased the frame rate and the speed and everything. And then that was done. But before I show you the finalized animated intro, I'm gonna take you over to Procreate. I had a lot of duplicates to back up this animation, and because of that, I never had any 
technical crashes or anything making the animation, which also meant that Procreate saved the entire time-lapse replay of this animation. I believe it's over 20 minutes long, which I'm not going to show you all of it, of course, but you can see it just kind of come to life in that time-lapse replay. It certainly took Procreate some time to register that, and then I decided to drive Procreate even more crazy by trying to export the time-lapse video, but not with the full length, with the 30 second link. So now you're gonna see the entire animation made in 30 seconds, but be warned, there's kind of some flashing lights that might drive your eyes a little crazy. <laughs> I've come a long way since my old animated intro that I rushed to make one evening sitting in my closet. There's some animation errors to it and stuff and I wasn't that proud of it when I made it, but it helped me make art videos, just like my new animated intro. So I'd like to thank you all for watching. May God bless you in your life and your art. But one last thing. It's the Lily Factor. Ding! <laughs>